Hey Scorpio, this is Kelly from Moon Pie. Oh, this is Moon Pie. I always want to say my first name. I'm here to do your love reading for January 2020. This is for Scorpio Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Please remember, as I always say, this is a general reading. So, you know, the messages may resonate for you. Um, so take what does. Um, the rest might be for somebody else. You never know. Um, join me on the live streams here on my channel, Sunday through Friday. Um, I do dailies, weeklies, a weekend uh, readings, and you can also get um, a one card reading for $10 from me, or you can get a three card reading for $20, okay? Super chats are available for those of you who can't access PayPal, um, but otherwise I prefer PayPal. So we post the links in the live streams, but definitely join in, they're lots of fun. All right, so Scorpio, let's take a look see what your love energy is or what's going on for Scorpio in the month of January. Happy New Year, you guys. Happy New Year. I cannot believe it's the roaring 20s. Um, how exciting is that? No more teens. No more single digits. No more teens. 2020. I feel like it's going to be a really good year for you guys. Um, I don't know why. I feel like the, the the winds of change are happening for you, Scorpios. Your life is taking on all new meaning in love. Some internal changes have been going on. Some core changes. Changing your beliefs. Changing your, I wonder what is the Chinese New Year? I can't remember. I'll have to look that up. Um, changing your beliefs, rethinking things. Um, you know, every seven years we go through ma uh, massive, major spiritual, physical, mental, emotional changes, physiological changes, and um, stuff's going on here in the new year, Scorpio. Um, for you guys and and for all the signs uh, major shift in 2020 so let's take a look here and see what the cards what spirit has to say for your love your love situation whether you have one or not maybe you'll have one in 2020 all right one second scorpio what does scorpio need to know for 2020 please show me Scorpio 2020, Scorpio love 2020, Scorpio love 2020, Scorpio, Scorpio love 2020, all right, oh, King of Pentacles, right off the bat, in the middle of the start of January, wow, the Four of Wands, the strength card driving the reading. Wow. Leo, Leo. Earth element. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. The sun in the past. Wow. Major arcana. Three major arcana. The fool. Aquarius energy. The five of swords. Moving forward. Position of you. Wow. The ten of cups. The queen of cups here in your person. Or what's surrounding you, the environment. Okay. You have the Nine of Pentacles and your hopes and fears. And the outcome is the High Priestess. Wow. And the Three of Cups. Bottom of the deck. Yeah. Look, Scorpio. Here you are taking a look at your life. What else do I need to do? Have I done enough? Really assessing contemplating the start of the new year. How are things going to go? Do I need to make more money? Do I have enough money? Um, should I invest? Should I not invest? What should I do with this? Should I, you have, it's like you have this one last coin and it's very valuable. Should I invest in somebody, whether it be for business, love, whatever it's, really thinking it through you're kind of taking on that virgo energy where you're really contemplating and thinking things over okay um this is the overall energy for january okay um you have a big decision that might be presented to you in january 
or maybe you're presenting it to yourself, or maybe it's just been something that you kind of have not been making a decision about. Maybe you've just been kind of think overthinking or thinking too long, but it feels like it's time. It feels like it's time for you to do something. It's time for you to bring something into balance here, into harmony. This card to me, temperance, always tells me that there's like, there's a love situation that's been brewing in your life and it's been divinely guided and blessed. Okay. And uh, it hasn't really come forward yet um, because it's still kind of cooking. Maybe you're, you know, <laughs> I always like to use strange analogies for the cards, but like, I try to like, imagine he just built this beautiful salad and he's like questioning, should I add one more tomato or is that enough? You know, is it, is it finished yet? Now this, this thing, this love thing, whatever this is, it, it's, it's being refined to perfection and you're just kind of like waiting for the right time right? It's, it's kind of like stocks, watching your stocks, waiting for the right time to cash out, you know, um, big decision going on here. Sagittarius energy, Virgo, maybe you have a decision between two people here. Okay. Um, but really contemplating and thinking, using your wisdom, trusting your intuition. So the past energy here, we do have the sun. And so, a very positive shift ha occurred in your life, maybe in 2019. Something was exposed. Something came out into the open. There was a lot of playful energy. Could have something to do with a child. Um, maybe there was like a sunny beach or a sunny area that you live in or, uh, or that you were in in the past, um, however long ago. Um, just a place where there's unicorns and beautiful white ponies and frolicking in the sun and a playful, just a playful energy, um, warm and glowing. You know, it's very positive. There may have been a yes to a question that was, was asked. Maybe you received a yes to something. All right, let's clarify the sun and see what more um, if we can specify a little deeper what the sun energy was about here. All right, let's take a look. The sun, the sun, the sun, the sun. Okay, the end of a burden. Wow, yeah. It you can't you can't that struggle's over. You finished something. Um, you finished something. Whatever the struggle was for you, a long time coming. It was a long time coming, and maybe it was just recently. Like you got to break free. You know, this is someone who's been at work, 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 work. And finally they got to go on vacation or they got a, just to be refreshed um, or whatever was going on. There was just, you know, the, the 10 of wands is always to me like someone like the struggle that you've had, you basically put it on yourself. Okay. Maybe you, maybe you had a reason, maybe you dove into work or you needed to like, you know, they always say like people break up and then they, they dive into work and that's healing for them. And they'll think about their pain and blah, blah, blah. Maybe for some of you, that was, the, that was it. Right. Or you just had to keep pushing forward, pushing forward, pushing forward. But you know what? I feel like you, you got to rest. You finally got done that in the past. You finished something. And you know what? At the time you're listening to this, maybe it was over the holidays or over Christmas or, you know, maybe it was last week or, or yesterday, whatever it was, um, you know, you're free from that burden. You freed yourself from that burden or you were freed from a burden from the past. Okay. But now in the present, um, you have the King of Pentacles here. So, you know, um, so either you are, you're either connecting, there's a lot of, I'm going to tell you this. Okay. The kings and the queens represent actual people. The other major arcanas, they represent energies. Could it be people? I mean, sure, but you make it whatever you want. I don't find it all that important. I just know that whoever you are dealing with, okay, um, I feel like, this person sits in the energy of the King of Pentacles. This is Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. This person is, is very much focused on their work, focused on their abundance, focused on 
um, what is good for them. They're quite reserved. This person tends to dress very well um, or likes to adorn themselves in nice clothing or fine clothing. They have, even if they're not rich or even if they don't live in a very expensive home, they like the finer things in life, okay? And they, they're able to get those things. Um, that could just be that doesn't even have to be material things. Even though the King of Pentacles has a tendency to represent material things, sometimes it's just the finer things in people. They like, or maybe they. This is how they are to you. They rep, maybe they represent to you being a very fine person. You know, high value. Okay. Um, and I feel like the Four of Wands is in the position of benefit challenge. Okay. Um, I feel like this King of Pentacles is, is definitely focused on marriage, commitment, family. Okay. Um, maybe there was some kind of struggle with you and this person where you guys couldn't get to that place. Um, but it's a good, it, you know what? It really is a benefit to have this. This this can be a reunion. Look, those four wands, this represents um, like 11-11, right? It's all in the timing coming together. And this can also be a reunion as well and celebrating something together. Um, this King of Pentacles, I feel, is like both of you, the energy of both of you, where you're both focused on your abundance and there is maybe talk or there will be talk about commitment, marriage, family, uh, meeting each other's families or reconciling a, a relationship, reconciling a marriage, re-strengthening a marriage, um, getting together for some type of an event. If you're listening to this before New Year's um, or something in January it could be a birthday celebration. If you're dealing with like an earth, like a Capricorn or something, within January. Um, but there is an energy here of like, um, it's a challenge to get to this place. It, it might be because the King of Pentacles is a bit reserved in his emotions. He doesn't really, he or she doesn't really share their emotions. They'd rather talk about business. <laughs> and you're Scorpio, you're more up in the um, emotional stuff. Like you just, you're just vibing the emotions all the time. And the King of Pentacles, um, again, earth element, isn't really like that. The King of Pentacles is more about the senses, right? Which is not, the senses produce the feeling. Um, you feel the feelings from the things you smell, you touch, you taste, Scorpio. It produces deep feelings within you. Um, it doesn't happen like that for the King of Pentacles. The, the King of Pentacles is, I, I, it's hard to explain. It's like, they're more interested in what touch feels like. They're more interested in what smell, you know, picking out their smells. It doesn't have a deep influence or a deep effect on them like it does you. It does have an effect on them, but it doesn't go that to that depth as it does with you. The, the King of Pentacles is not usually hypersensitive or super sensitive to stimulus, right? Um, and the King of Pentacles really doesn't care if he's in union with someone or not, because he's always focused on his money and his material things. He's quite happy with his um, sports car. He's quite happy with um, his brand new clothing or, you know, his, his coffee pot. Like those things bring him happiness. <laughs> Where you're more like, you know, you're happy with those things too, but you want union, right? You don't like being without a partner. You don't like being without a person. The King of Pentacles is fine on their own. Okay. Um, so it's a challenge for the Pink King of Pentacles to get into partnership or marriage, that kind of thing. Um, because they don't just don't really share the deep feelings that you do. And so, but it, it's, it's fine. It's not necessarily good or bad. It's just difference, right? It's a difference between chicken soup and tomato soup. It's still soup. It's just different flavors, right? So what's driving this reading is strength. Um, there is a very strong bond here with you and your person. 
There's no doubt about that. Okay. Maybe this is a Leo. Um, but whomever your person is, um, the foundation feels very like, did you ever see that commercial with the guy who glues his hard hat to the beam? And then he hangs from it, like up on a skyscraper building, like it's super glue strong, this connection. Look, and the Ace of Cups is here that just, I saw that. Um, yeah, so this is definitely a blessed union. It's a gift from heaven. It's a gift from God, from spirit. Um, you guys are connected because of this, not because of your choices. Believe me, this situation was willed upon you both. This wasn't like... I mean, don't take credit, Scorpio, for this connection being what it is, because it came to you out of the blue, whoever your person is. And I would say the same to Scorpio's cross watcher. Don't think for two minutes that you made this decision, right? You guys came together because it was a blessed union, because it was it was divinely guided. It was you were meant to meet, you were meant to be together. All right. Um, and there, and that's why we have this very strong bond here with strength. Let's clarify strength. Okay, clarifying it with another major arcana. Again, a very fortunate connection. It's a very favorable connection, and I know it sometimes it might not feel that way, but it is. It is. And so don't pay attention to your doubts and your, your losses or whatever, because those are just, that's just interference. Listen, the way I see it, right? When you have a divinely guided connection, um, the devil wants to destroy that. Now you can call him the devil if you want. You can call it some creepy, dark underground force, whatever you want to call it. I really don't care. I'm just telling you that anything good, um, evil will try to destroy it and evil comes in the way of like somebody not valuing you it's not this person scorpio this person does value you it's just we're human and sometimes people get affected by those demons right so let's just say it's an underground demon who's trying to destroy this connection. I think I might even caption it. This is a favorable connection. This is a lucky, fortunate, wow, right? And there might be some type of um, desire for travel here, right? What was I saying in one of my readings today that I was talking about the Wheel of Fortune? It always reminds me of, um, and I forget what that wheel is called when you're on a ship, um, you know, in, the, in, in those, old, those old wooden ships, I guess any ship. I, I remember Gilligan's Island, like the, the the captain and the skipper were turning the wheel, right? I'm just so stupid. But anyway, yeah, this is fixed energy with this wheel. Just it's fixed in place to keep moving forward. So it's very favorable, um, this connection. And this is what drives this reading here. The fool is at crowning. And this is telling me that this connection is worth the risk. It's worth taking the risk. And I know that you're in this energy here of like, should I or shouldn't I? Sometimes you got to stop thinking so much. You just do it, right? And these are both travel cards to me. So I feel like there's a there's a desire and a drive to move forward, okay? And, and also, like, this is the root. This is coming from the earth up. And this here is, like, what's coming down. Like, you're being pressured from above and below to get moving, both of you, this connection, to take a risk, to take a chance, to get it started. Now, the Five of Swords is here coming. This is just great. So this to me, I always call this my slaying the dragon's card. This to me is like fighting for this connection. You, your person, whomever, the energy, it's ripe. It's like everybody else needs to get the heck out of here. I'm defending what's mine. And I don't care if you walk away sad and hurt and upset because I deserve this. I'm taking what's mine. Now, Scorpio, maybe that's your person who's coming after you. And if that's creepy, well, sorry, but that's what's happening here. This is what I feel. And maybe, or it could be you, or it could be both of you fighting for this connection, right? That's the, that's the, you know, things are manageable and I am just completely, it's a shutout. Somebody is saying it's a shutout. Um, I'm not letting anybody else get into this or um, even those demons shutting out. You know, I always like to say um, Satan comes to us as an angel of light sometimes, not as this scary, creepy monster. Right. Look at George. George. Who the hell's George? Look at Ted Bundy. I mean, 
he was so charismatic and people just like girls were so attracted to him and he was so brilliant and so kind and charming angel of light but what was he underneath right um fighting off those demons fighting off that that crazy that that person or those people who come at you with bad intentions but they they show you know that wolf in sheep's clothing fighting that off right so scorpio look this is your energy you want this this is what you want this happy this is everything this is complete emotional happiness. This is surrendering to love. This is the golden, uh, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. This is joyousness. This is happy family. This is like a complete emotional. Uh, it's, it's more than emotional contentment. Like this is what you want, but this is not just come by itself. This comes with family union. Look at these people. The challenge is getting to that. But, you know, maybe... It might not just be you. It's it's your person that you're dealing with. Maybe they feel, maybe they need a good shaking up, Scorpio, right? I'm going to clarify that fool card because I forgot to do that. All right. King of Wands here, taking on that leadership energy, Scorpio, right? You are Mars ruled. You, you have, you your sign is ruled by two planets, Mars and Pluto. Pluto is that underground force, that dark force, that's Hades, okay? Um, that's Hades in the underground world, the darkness, right? You're constantly in battle with between Mars and that Pluto energy. That, that Pluto, Hades has a tendency to just take whatever and drag it down into the underworld and, and, and dwell in the darkness. And then, but Mars is like the fiery action warrior. And this is Mars energy. This is Aries, right? So taking on that leadership role in your life. Some people call the fool card the Aries. I don't know why. It's, you know, um, the planet Uranus rules this card, which is Aquarius. But either way, however you want to take it, it's taking that leadership position in your life, Scorpio, and taking a risk right? Because you can't be a bold leader and not take risks, right? <laughs> you can't. Like, you, you're never going to be an alpha or bold leader if you don't take a risk. I don't care if you're a feminine. There's plenty of feminine alphas. You don't have to be a man, right? But you just have that alpha means bold and brave and, take, and taking on that Mars energy of yours and putting it to good use, okay? Your person has a Queen of Cups energy here, so softening up a little bit. And it might have something to do with you taking initiative, right? Now, I know some of you are females and you're listening to this and you're saying, well, I'm not chasing this person. I don't feel like you need to chase anybody, but I feel like you need to be firm and I feel like you need to stand your ground with this person. Listen, if your person isn't fighting for you, um, then you know what? You may need to slay your person and you may need to say, if you're not going to fight for me, okay, I'll fight for me, right? Like somebody has to fight for you, Scorpio. And if it's not going to be other people, it has to be you. And you have to be a bold leader and be aggressive in January for what it is that you want. And especially when it comes to love, okay? And that could just mean, you know, putting your dukes up <laughs> and taking no prisoners, don't take any hostages with you on your journey, right? Because you don't need that. If there's one person in your life that you need to like be firm with and um, be, you know, because the struggle's over for you, you have nothing to lose here. But you just have to come to this place of making this decision when the time is right to do it. Your person is definitely softening up and this is water energy here, okay? Um they they will be taking a look at their cup, you know, that love offer, that cup. Um, lid is closed still, okay? Um, but they are contemplating this love situation here, okay? Um, so you could be dealing also with, as I said, earth energy. You could be dealing with water. Or you could be dealing with someone who's got a little bit of both in there, right? Um, maybe they have, uh, maybe you're dealing with someone who the blockage is the king of pentacles, or um, 
another person in the situation that that maybe they are connected to or um you feel they might be married if listen if that's the case if you're male listening to this and you think there's somebody else but you want to be with this person because we've got two kings here you have to take the lead that's what i feel you have to take leadership in this and and, and you know go for the gusto go get what you want if you don't want it then get the hell out of there and don't block it um if you're female you know, as I was saying, you might be trying to make a choice between two people. You might be connected to someone already, but there's somebody else that you're crazy about. You've got to draw the line. You have to draw a boundary. Pick a lane, Scorpio. That's how I feel. Now, your hopes and fears, you're fearing you might be single. You do fear you're going to make a bad decision. Your fear, that's why you're contemplating so much. For some of you, are. it is a decision between two people, but this is why you're contemplating and thinking, what do I do? Should I? Should I not? I'm not really sure. Um, you're fearing that the decision you make is going to render you completely alone with your bird and your little snail down there and, you know, your money in the bank and yeah, yeah, that's all great, but I can't sleep with these things in my bed, you know? So you fear making a wrong move, even if it's not about two people and it's just with one particular person, you fear it that you're going to be single, but at the same time, you hope that you will be stable no matter what you do, okay? Because you don't want to be thrown off balance. The outcome is beautiful. You will have a reunion um, and you will have an offer to celebrate with somebody in particular, a very intuitive person. This person comes across as like with the high priestess energy. This person comes across as very knowledgeable, could be religious, could be spiritual. Um, we have the Torah which is that it's the same. Look, you might be dealing with someone. Oh, maybe you're showing them tarot card readings. Look, we have T-O-R-A and in reverse is T-A-R-O, tarot, Torah. The Torah is the Old Testament in the Bible. Who knows? I don't know. Whatever the situation is going on. But this person is very intuitive and very spiritual. And so are you. And you are evenly matched. And I do feel like there will be some type of reunion or celebration sometime in January. Could be the third week of January. Could even be January 3rd. Um, but there's definitely something going on here. This is the yin, the yin and the yang, the black and the white. Um, this is Boaz and Joachim. And so there is a story about them in the Bible that um, in the Old Testament that if you ever want to read about that, you can. I'm not going to go into it right now. But the energy of the reading looks great. There's just going to be a lot of communication in January. Some sweet, mild, emotional very, very sweet. This is like the icing on the cake type of communication coming from another person. Um, it's just, it's good energy and I'm very happy for you. And I, and I, I think I've said all I need to say here. So I hope you guys have a very happy new year. I'm going to finish the rest of the readings tomorrow. Don't forget to pop in on the live streams. Please like hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel as I've been losing subscribers because YouTube is penalizing me for not using their super chats in my live streams, but that's a, that's a different video altogether. Love you guys. Have a happy new year and I will see you very soon. Take care.